The evidence points that they knew it was coming and did nothing about it. The evidence points that there is explosive material in the rubble of the World Trade Center and nobody's investigating it. The 9-11 Commission had nothing but politicians, not an engineer, not a physicist, not a family member, not a victim, not a first responder, only politicians. That is a problem. It's not properly investigated. The 9-11 Commission report reads like a novel. I mean, come on, there's no real information in that. And anything that we try to put out, I mean, you guys just simply knock us down. And again, the way, the best way that Dylan put it is that why are we fighting? Why are we going back and forth between? No, we are, because uh, this piece is going to air. And uh, we already know what the piece we is going to do. We already know what you guys are going to do. Just by the questions you asked us, it's very clear what your agenda is. So the only question is, are you going to continue attacking us? And are you going to keep doing the same thing that the media has done for years? Or are you actually going to try and get some justice? I, I'm curious though, did you start with a conclusion and work backwards to get Absolutely not. No. No, the, this, our film was created by accident, it was created by finding information when trying to research a different story. These things are out there, the information was just out there. And well, tell us how your film started, how, how did it begin? You want, I'll, I'll, I got it. Get emotion. Oh, how did the film start? Oh, yeah. The gyms. It was, it was, good? Okay. The film started, oh, the film started, the film started, the film started, the film started by accident. It essentially was Dylan writing a script about uh, three kids that were trying to make a change, that thought they thought knew something and were trying to let the public know about it. In doing so, just simply researching the events of 9-11, the information became apparent that there's other angles, there's other things that you, could have happened. Did you, start, did you start off trying to make a fictional film? We did start off trying to make a fictional film, yes. And it transpired into finding the information that we did. And again, I didn't believe this. When I, when I first, you know, was, I was in the military. My first day of basic training was September 11th. I was gung-ho. I was go to war, get the, you know, let's get the terrorists. But with the overwhelming amount of evidence that I've seen that's come across my desk, it's very hard to just to, to digest the 9-11 Commission report. And again, whatever, whatever you know, is out there, the science is, is irrefutable, I where feel. You, where are you guys going with this? What, what do you think you're going to accomplish with this? We have, we've already accomplished more than we ever tried to accomplish. We, all we wanted to do was how just... Many people, how many people have seen you? Hundreds of millions yeah. of people. It's, it's been translated into over 20 languages. It's hit every corner of the earth because of Google and YouTube. And people come after us and they say, well, how could you make a documentary? How could you benefit from the from the death of other people? The only difference between us and ABC News, you guys made a documentary about 9-11 as well, is that we give it away for free. We ask people to copy it, distribute it, and, and you know, that's our opinion. So we it's, live, gone, it's gone viral. It's gone, it's, it was... It went viral and back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is. It has its own life, and we're not trying to accomplish anything else at this point. I'm going to college. Dylan's trying to take off and do the things in video in, in the video industry his own way. We're, he's shooting music videos. I'm trying to get my college degree. You know, we we've moved on with our lives, and we're trying to. We come to these events to support the people that are actually doing the work. This is actually the first time we've been to a conference together in over six months. I mean, maybe longer. Because Even again, longer. I mean, we did our job. We made the movie. It's out there. It's up to. It's not the job of the young filmmakers anymore. It's the job of ABC News to actually investigate 9-11 and actually try to get some accountability. What do you think about the fact that someone like John Patrick Bedell, who shares some of these beliefs, tries walking into the Pentagon loaded with ammunition and is shot by the Well, first of all, we don't know exactly what he believed. We know that the news said that he might have been a truther, but that's it. That's all we know. I don't support violence. It's that simple. And you? I think it's very interesting what's happened in this case and I don't know, like Dylan said, I don't know his beliefs or whether he was a real truth or not, but what's interesting is I've heard 9-11 truth more in the last seven days on the news or the last couple days in the news than I have in the last seven years. So what? Because, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to already uh, equate us with this man and trying to say that the 9-11 truth movement is a militia gun-toting and you know anti-government conspiracy theory that couldn't be anything farther from the truth I'm a constitutionalist I want the Constitution back to the way it was you know freedom of speech and, and everything like that there should be nothing else held out against the American people I mean Cindy Sheehan is here what more do you need to know 
don't know what that has to do with anything. Well, because Cindy Sheehan supports the 9-11 Truth Movement, and I think Cindy Sheehan is uh, pretty obviously anti-violence. Look, we're a peaceful movement, and just because someone picks up a gun and shoots people and the news decides to say, hey, he was a truther, that doesn't suddenly mean all of us are ready to pick up guns. But it's so funny that when we try to do good things, when we donate money to the first responders, or we try to, you know, on the anniversary, try to show support and educate other people, just about our idea, just the idea, just, to, just the idea to think, just the idea not to digest the, the main thing, that we don't get any coverage. That, you know, the Tea Party Convention got every single organization there because it was, you know, do you know where the Tea Party started? It started in the 9-11 Truth Movement of us dumping the 9-11 Commission Report into, into the Boston Bay. So, you know, it's interesting how until now, until there's a violent act, now they're going to talk about the 9/11 truth. Now you truth guys men. are here to ask us about it. You didn't, you didn't care before, but now all of a sudden, now that there's a gunman, it's okay to come to the conference and interview us about it. Where did you, where do you see yourself in, in, in politically? I'm sorry. Where do you see yourself? I mean, some people would think that you're part of the lunatic fringe. American politics. I'm a constitutionalist. I want the I want the restoration of the United States Constitution. I think it's pretty simple. First of all, there is no lunatic fringe political spectrum. What are you talking about? Are you just calling us names, or is that a real? No, I'm asking you where do you where do you see yourself in American politics? Do you see yourself on the fringes, mainstream? Where do you see yourself? I see myself as a concerned citizen who cares about his country and is sick of seeing the news attack people that want to see justice. It's bottom line. I'm an American man. I care about my country. You're convinced that the elected representatives of your country may have helped kill innocent people? Uh, yeah, it's a fact. It's happened before, it happened on 9-11, and it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again? How? Inevitably. How? <laughs> sure, okay, well let me draw you a map. How am I supposed to say how it's going to happen? I don't know, but it has happened before, it happened on 9-11, and it will inevitably happen again. History repeats itself. Let me just ask you one last question. What about all the people on the plane who were killed? They're Did dead. They They're dead. We don't question that at yeah. all. Yeah, what are you trying to put in our mouths now? I'm just asking. No, you're not. Why are you asking us that? It's a question. It's my job. No, I know, but why did you ask us that question? No sinister motive. Good. The people are dead. It's an absolute tragedy. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming to the conference. I urge you to listen to some of the speakers that have come in here. And if you want to talk about some technical information, Richard Gage is going to be up there soon, giving his, uh, you know, the architects and engineers rundown of their latest findings and everything like that. I urge you to stay and just listen and just watch. And again, we're just two young guys that made a movie that went viral on the internet. It was an accident. We got, I wouldn't even call it lucky. We've been berated through the media. We've been given death threats. We've been called every name under the sun. I am a veteran of the United States. I have done more for this country than 95% of the people that live here. And all I'm trying to do is get some justice for the people like Bob McElvain who are crying on stage asking the United States government to simply investigate what they should have investigated in the first place properly. It's not that difficult. I, What's the next movie about? We're not making any more movies. There's no more documentaries. We don't, we don't want to do this. We, we don't want to be the ones out here saying that 9-11 is an inside job, but somebody's got to do it. And I, I will, I've stood up before, I will do it again, and I don't, I don't care. You want to call me a name, you want to call me whatever, go for it. I'm going to still be here. I'm going to be doing the same thing I've been doing for years because I know that I'm a good person and that I'm doing the right thing. Let me ask you an honest question. Are you going to do a sit-down interview with Bob McElveen? I don't know. So that's a no. I would urge you to do that. See, that's the thing. You're here to interview us, but you're not here to interview a family member. Why is that? Why is that? I'm curious. I told you I don't know. You don't know. You're the producer, aren't you? No, I'm the reporter. You're the reporter? Well, why can't you at least sit down with Bob McElveen and interview him just for the hell of it? I would urge you to. I, I, I mean, you, this has been a very emotional actually, interview. Because you've actually been here, you've had an opportunity to speak to all these people that could actually talk to you about the loved ones they lost, the actual pain and grief that they've had to go through, and instead you're sitting here interviewing us. So why is that? Why is it easier to interview us than the actual people who are affected by 9-11? Because you don't want to interview them. No, no, I don't you're think so. Because you're not doing your job. You are not doing your job. Either way. Plain and Thank simple. You. Thank you. Nice interview. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Good luck. Sometimes screaming that people that they're going to be dead in the FEMA camps.